السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفاه وبعد My dear viewers, welcome to another edition of our program Gardens of the Pious and today's episode is number 346 in the series of explaining Riyadh al-Salihin um, Inshallah also today we will begin studying chapter number 102 which deals with what to say um, or the response to an invitation extended to a man observing fasting. So in case that you've been invited to attend a meal, a feast, a walima, an invitation while you're fasting, what should you do and what should you say? It will be discussed in the chapter inshallah. This is the first episode in the chapter. Um, the first hadith is a sound hadith collected by Imam Muslim, may Allah have mercy on him. And the narrator of the hadith is the great companion Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him. An Abi Huraira taradi Allahu anhu qal, qala Rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, idha du'iya ahadukum fal yujib, fa in kana sa'iman fal yusall, wa in kana muhtaran fal yat'am. In this hadith, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Whenever any of you is invited to a meal, he should accept the invitation. If he is observing fasting, he should make dua, supplicate for the betterment of the host, and if he is not fasting, he should eat. This is a prophetic etiquette concerning accepting the invitation. In another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained the importance of accepting the invitation if you are invited, especially if you are invited by the name. When somebody extends his invitation to you directly and he says, brother or sister or so and so, I'm having a walima, I'm having dinner and it will honor me uh, to have you present among us. Uh, so if he invites you by the name, then attending such invitation is wajib. It's a must. It's a must. Whether it is aqiqa, walima, or dinner, uh, engagement, graduation ceremony, as long as no haram will be involved and you are invited by the name, then you must accept the invitation. Unless if you happen to be out of town or you have a previous commitment and you committed yourself to be in another place at the same time. Otherwise, if you're not booked during this time and you have been invited specially and by the name, by any mean, send in a letter, a message, SMS, <coughs> asking somebody to convey the message to you so you have been acknowledged that you are invited and you are available then accepting the invitation is a must. Well, Sheikh, I know that I have been invited before. And these guys, they have a mixed gathering and there are a lot of violations, which I tried myself last time to avoid and it was unavoidable. So I know for sure that they will have a band, music and dancing and all of that. Then accepting such invitation is haram. You should not actually uh, go there because you know that you will be involved in these violations. If you cannot stop it, then do not be with them. Now we're talking about the first type of invitations, halal invitation, walima, aqiqa, nice people, nice gathering, uh, inviting you for dinner, for food. Uh, but there is a problem. What is it? I happen to be fasting. 
uh, I was fast in the six days of Shawwal, or I normally fast on Mondays and Thursdays, or today is the third day of the three white days every month, or, or, or. Well, now if you are not talking about mandatory fasting, and this is a voluntary fasting, we want to learn whether it is uh, permissible for a person who is fasting a voluntary fasting to break his fast or not. And whether he is required to make it up or not. It has been narrated that two incidents happened in the house of the Prophet ﷺ. Once he got up and he asked Aisha radiallahu anha for food and she said we have none. So he said never mind. Inni sa'im. And he resumed fasting. The fact of the matter that as long as the person didn't do anything of the violation of fasting, he didn't eat, he didn't drink, he didn't have him to have sexual relations with his or her spouse, and you know they got up in the morning at noon and there is no food, or they decided to fast, it is permissible because this is not a, a wajib fasting, a mandatory fasting. So the person may start it even midday, but the thawab or the word will be in proportion with the time that he has observed in fasting from the moment that he intended, not from dawn, okay, because he only intended to fast right now, provided they haven't done anything of the violation of fasting since the morning. They didn't eat, they didn't drink, they didn't have any sexual relations. In the other incident, the Prophet ﷺ actually got up with the intention of fasting, voluntary fasting. فَأُهْدِيَ إِلَيْهِمْ حَيْسَةً you know, a type of food which is made of dates and uh, gutter cheese. So the Prophet ﷺ broke his fast because it was voluntary fasting before sunset and he ate. So that means it is permissible if the person was fasting a voluntary fast. Then he decided have way to eat or to drink. It is permissible. Is he required to make up this day which he missed. No, he is not required, but if he does it, it becomes better. If the person started doing something good, he should either continue it, finish it up, or at least make it up some other time. But it is not mandatory though. It is only recommended. So these are very important ahkam. Number one, what happens? If you get up and there is no food, or you decided to fast half day, if you just figure that today is the day of Arafah, or it is the 10th of Muharram, and you didn't know its fasting is highly appreciated by Allah, there is a great reward for it. Um, you didn't eat, you didn't drink, you didn't do anything since dawn. Can I fast now? Yes, it is permissible. On the other hand, you got up with the intention of fasting Monday, Thursday, or any voluntary fasting then you found yourself extremely hungry or you've been invited to a walima or to a feast is it permissible to break your fast it is permissible why because it is nafila voluntary you have the choice the third hukm do i have to make it up no it is not mandatory but it is recommended so if the person didn't make it up he's not blameworthy it was voluntary in the first place so this ahkam, we put it as introduction to studying the hadith that we have right now, beforehand. The Prophet ﷺ said, if you have been invited to attend food, and inviting people to attend a walima or food or to eat with you is a prophetic sunnah. Rasulullah ﷺ recommended that because it brings people together. It brings their hearts together. It makes them more united and more loving. Sharing is caring. The Prophet ﷺ said, Tahadu, tahabu. Exchange gifts, it shall develop and create love between you. And he said, ﷺ said, La tahqiranna jara ila jaratiha shay'an walaw kafar sanishah. If you have been given any gift, even if it is something insignificant, a little bit of food, 
even if it is the hooves or the feet of the sheep, which many people do not eat. The vast majority of people think it is disgusting to eat such food, but there are some people who eat it, okay? Believe it or not, there are some people who go to the butcher shop to buy only the bones, and the bones are sold, and they're not cheap. Why? To make broth, soup out of that. They boil the bones. It may have some debris of meat around the, the joints or around the, the bones, the leftover. So they boil that in order to create soup so they can uh, drink it or uh, soak some bread in it and eat it because they cannot afford the meat itself. A lot of people actually do that. A lot of people do not eat meat all year round. Only when people give them a gift. What about people who go to uh, the chicken shop and they get, subhanAllah, the bones of the chicken, they get the heads, they get the feet, which people normally throw away. And this is what they cook for their uh, kids. So the Prophet has said, if one is gifted anything, even if it is something as little as the feet of the sheep, uh, do not perceive it as insignificant. Uh, do not think it is uh, despicable. Rather appreciate it. Appreciate any gift that is given to you. When somebody invites you, that means he cares about you. He loves you, but this is how much they can afford. We have learned previously, if you're invited and the food is something you like, eat it, then say Bismillah and say Alhamdulillah by the end and thank the host. What if it is something that you cannot eat it? Well, in this case, uh, do not criticize it. Do not blame it. Many times when... I happen to travel here and there and I visit different cultures. Some people actually fix their favorite food. Once after the Jumu'ah prayer, one of the families in the United States invited me for uh, lunch and uh, I happily accepted. And they kept talking about what they had prepared for lunch. And when I sat, it was something that I, I, I never ever heard of before. So they said, this is our, like, you know, favorite food, and we cook it only on the Eid day. I tried to eat it, but I couldn't develop any taste to it. So I kept on eating pickles, olives, and, and bread. So the host noticed that I'm not eating from this. He keeps adding in, in my plate. I said, I'm not familiar with it. He said, no, 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 you got to try it. I did try it. Don't push, you know. So you don't hurt the feeling of the host, and also the host, should uh, have an understanding that you do not push. Maybe they are not familiar with it. Okay. Alhamdulillah, they came and they accepted their invitation. They can eat anything. They can drink water. They can drink juice. They can eat some fruits. You understand? Or salad, that's perfectly fine. You don't know what are the conditions of the host and also the conditions of the guest. So if you're invited, you got to accept the invitation. Sometimes the invitation is general. Somebody get us up, gets up in the mission and says, Brothers and sisters, everybody please, tomorrow between Maghrib and Isha, I'm having the aqiqah for my son or my daughter. That's called da'watun amma, general invitation. So it is highly recommended for all the audience to attend. But if you didn't attend, you're not blameworthy. Because he didn't say, Sheikh Salah, please, I want you to attend the aqiqah of my son or daughter or my walima uh, on the date. Now when he invites you by the name and specifies you with the da'wah, then it's a must. And when you attend, nice compliment. Thank you so much. And here is the situation if actually you got up this morning and you're fasting. If it is a mandatory fasting, resume on fasting. What did the Prophet said? So even if you're fasting, respond to the invitation. Go, show up, show yourself. And what am I going to do? I'm not eating. I'm not even eating dessert or fruits because I'm fasting. He said so. If you're fasting, you can make dua for the host. So he invites you and you show up that shows courtesy. You really care. And then when he says, why aren't you eating? Well, I'm fasting today. You know, today is the last day of the month of Shawwal, and I only 
uh, fasted for five days, so I gotta continue today. Oh, no problem. Uh, can I wrap some for you to go? Oh, I appreciate that. It's a matter of showing courtesy and complimenting one another in a nice way. He cared about me and he invited me. Even though I'm fasting, I showed up. What if it is one of those days which I have an alternative to fast? Monday, Thursday, or the three days of every month. And he has prepared, or she has prepared a nice feast for your honor. And then he said, I'm fasting. <gasps> the person is disappointed. And his wife is very upset because she's been working hard. You know, some of the food they cook overnight. You know, they, it takes them six, seven hours. Like if they're cooking halim or nihari or any of this kind of food. And they're making this specially for you. So in this case, the Prophet ﷺ give you the judgment based on your best judgment. You have an access to decide the solution based on your best judgment. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if you're not fasting, eat, eat. And if you're fasting, it will be sufficient to make dua. Does it mean that you don't have to bake your fast all the time? Well, it depends. I mean, if the host and his family encountered, you know, uh, some hard labor in order to prepare the meal, and now they're very upset, they're disappointed because you're not eating. If you think that will break his heart and will disappoint him, break your fast. You're not blameworthy. Break your fast and eat. And you will be rewarded for that. You don't have to make up this missed fasting because it was voluntary in the first place. But it is recommended to fast another day to make it up. If you want to, you will be rewarded for that. It is simply recommended. Um, when the Prophet says, If based on your best judgment, you're so close, like blood brothers, cousins, in-laws, so you are, you are used to visiting each other all the time. And now, you know, if you say, I'm fasting, it won't hurt their feeling. Oh, okay, no problem. I'll continue fasting. May Allah bless you. Include us in your dua. In this case, resume fasting. Then he said, فَلْيُصَلِّ As-salah here doesn't mean the prayer of praying for rakas or two rakas. As-salah refers to the linguistic definition, the lexical meaning of salah, which is ad-du'a. To make du'a, to supplicate for the betterment of the host. May Allah bless you. May Allah bless your family. If it is a child, بُورِكَ فِي الْمَوْهُوبِ وَشَكَرْتَ الْوَاهِبِ وَبَلْغَ أَشُدَّهُ وَرُزِقْتَ بِرَّ The supplication you say to somebody whenever they receive a new baby. Um, a walima for wedding. بَارَكَ اللَّهُ لَكُمَا وَبَارَكَ عَلَيْكُمَا وَجَمَعَ بَيْنَكُمَا فِي خَيْرِ You invoke barakah for the host and uh, his family. When somebody looks at the hadith, the first glance, and he looks at, oh, well, if you're fasting, you make dua for the host. And if you're not fasting, eat. Does it mean that if you eat, that is sufficient? You don't have to make dua? Of course not. But he specifically mentioned making dua here because it soothes and it comforts the host by making dua as, look, I won't be able to eat because I'm fasting, but here I'm making dua for you. Also, if you end up eating, or if you're not fasting and you eat, it is recommended to make dua for the host, based on the occasion. I've mentioned two supplications, in the case of the aqiqah, in the case of the walima, uh, in the case of inviting somebody, being invited for dinner, breakfast, or whatever. Uh, may Allah feed and give the drink to the person who gives us the food and the drink. And you pray for the host and his family, for the betterment of the host and his family in both conditions. Whether you ended up eating and drinking or you resumed fasting, both conditions it is recommended to make dua. Since the Prophet ﷺ has said, whenever somebody does you a favor, reward them. If you cannot afford to reward them, then just say, Jazakumullahu khayran. The term Jazakumullahu khayran is the greatest compensation. It is an invocation. May Allah reward you 
with what is good. You pray for the betterment of that person. Uh, khairan is in the anonymous. So Allah the Almighty choose what high reaches the person whom you have prayed for. So we have learned from this hadith what happens if you are invited and you happen to be fasting and what the options, what are the options which you have in this condition based on your best judgment whether the host would really be offended uh, feel sad and upset or disappointed or it is perfectly okay with them so use your best judgment the following chapter chapter number 103 so in the previous chapter we had only one hadith in the chapter 103 it is Babu Maya Kuluhu Manduria Ila Paamin Fatabiahu Gayro. This chapter deals with what should a person say to the host if an uninvited person accompanied him to the invitation. What does it mean? Somebody invited you for a walima aqiqa or dinner, and this is not a public invitation. It is by name he invited you only so you brought your own brother your own friend your own neighbor you attended the prayer and while you live in the masjid a friend met you where you heading for i said i'm going to uh, you know have dinner with one of the brothers why don't to join us do you have the right to invite others to an invitation which you have been invited to or to attend this what we will get to learn inshallah in the following hadith hadith number 738 narrated Abu Mas'ud al-Badri radiyallahu an and he's a different companion than Abdullah ibn Mas'ud I believe we discussed his biography before and this is a highly sound hadith agreed upon its authenticity an Abi Mas'ud al-Badri radiyallahu anhu qal دعا رجل النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لطعام صنعه له خامس خمسة فتبعهم رجل فلما بلغ الباب قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إن هذا تبعنا فإن شئت أن تأذن له وإن شئت رجع قال بل آذن له يا رسول الله very lovely etiquette wonderful hadith Abu Mas'ud al-Badri and the word Badri indicates that he attended the battle of Badr he was one of the 314 people whom Allah is pleased with because they've attended the battle of Badr and what an honor he said once a man prepared some food especially for the Prophet وسلم, and invited him along with four others خامسة خمسة, he was the fifth of five guests four in addition to the Prophet on the way a man accompanied the Prophet and then when he arrived at the door of the host the messenger of Allah peace be upon him said to the host seeking his permission well this person has followed us uh, you may allow him if you like but if you don't like, he simply will return. He said, O Messenger of Allah, I would definitely allow him to. You mean that this is not rude? You know, uh, if, you in, if you bring somebody with you to an invitation in the first place, this is rude without getting a permission. Secondly, what if the host said no? Would it be simply okay to tell the guy who followed you or your friend, uh, no, you're not allowed to go home? Yes, that is perfectly fine. This is what the Quran teaches us. If you show up at somebody's house in his front door, is so and so here? You don't have to lie. You don't have to say, Tell him that is not here. Why? Because you guys, you, your wife and kids, finally got together to have a meal. It's been a while. You're working overnight, a night shift. And now that is the only day that you have a chance to eat with your kids. 
And somebody showed up at this time. So if he walks in, he will disturb this family gathering. So some people will just take it easy and say, tell him he's not here. That's a lie, plain lie. And it has severe consequences because you instill the concept of lying and you make it you make your child perceive it as it is okay in the mind of your child or children. What shall you do? Yes, he's here, but he's not available now. He will be available in an hour or two. Is that okay? Perfectly okay. Uh, but that may hurt his feeling. It shouldn't. Because Allah Almighty said, if you were told, Erji'u, return, go back. I'm not available now. They return. Having said so, brothers and sisters, 1400 years ago, hmm, people didn't have phones, neither landlines nor cell phones. They didn't have any means of communication. So the only way to visit somebody is to show up at his front door and knock on the door or call upon him. If he's available, he will allow you. And if he's not, maybe later take a hike come back there is no problem with that what some people do nowadays without any previous Allah without any previous notice or permission they just simply show up maybe it's lunch time dinner time midnight hey I came to check on you and visit with you oh, thank you so much but you know I have a, I have a commitment now I'm taking my family to the doctor or I was taking them out. We are actually invited to attend dinner somewhere. It's okay, I'll just hang around for half hour with you. This is silly. This is nonsense. This is lack of etiquette. Can I say that again? Showing up at the door of somebody without any previous appointment, without any previous alarm or notice is not polite. Why? Why not? Why isn't it polite? Because nowadays, it's like very simple to give somebody a buzz or to get a previous appointment through the phone, through the, you know, any means of communication. You know, can I come right now? Oh, yes, please come on over. Okay. And then when the person is allowed to come or when you have an appointment, there is a, a terrible habit where you say, I'm, I'm coming to see you today. When? Today. Today, today there is 24 hours a day. When exactly? During the daytime, that is more than 12 hours. When exactly? Afternoon, uh, it's now six hours. When? Between afternoon until sunset, until midnight. W when? Be specific. There is nothing wrong with that. Why? Because, you know, I don't have to, you know, feel tied up just waiting for you to show up at any time that is convenient for you which may not be convenient for me so I may you know share and I whisper in the ears of some of our brothers who go out to go to do da'wah and they show up at the door of people without previous appointment especially in the west where you know it, it is it is almost impossible to show up at somebody's front door without a previous appointment it is their weekend, they have a commitment, or they have guests, and they say, I just need half hour from your time. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't have time. Give me 15 minutes. I don't have time. 10 minutes. Uh, you got to make some sense. You got to understand that people have commitments. If you think that your message is very valuable, you should respect it. You should respect the person whom you showed up at his front door without previous appointment. Some people argue saying, well, Sheikh, if I call them and if I ask them to get an appointment to show up or to visit them, they will decline. So that's why we show up. This is even an excuse which is worse than your previous uh, mistake. They say in Arabic, is it because that they will give you a reason that I'm busy, I'm not going to be available? So you skip seeking permission and you just show up to confront them with the reality of your presence? You know, this is not right, brothers and sisters. I think we need to take a short break. Inshallah, when we come back, 
or resume talking about the same beautiful hadith so please stay tuned from that I've really come to understand that to be a Muslim to be someone who says they've surrendered and submitted to the will of God is to be in harmony with everything around you and to be a benefit to everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our creator, he gave us a life plan. He told us what to do. He, he gave us, you know, goals and what he expects from us. It has roots in Islam because the first man who was created, Adam, he was neither a Jew or a Christian, but he submitted himself to God, Abraham. He didn't submit to anyone in creation. He didn't even hear in any of these religions. But when he was told to do what? Submit to the will of God. That's it's not attached to his preconceived notions. Yes. And if he looks with an objective eye and an open heart, he'll see it. Unless Allah, for some reason, has something over his eyes because yeah. of something that we don't know is in his heart. Uh, you had, from 1980 to 2005, you had the FBI data report showing that, now from all these years, that only 6% had mm -hmm. any links to... Islam. 94% were people who had nothing to do with Islam. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. book of Allah, the miraculous words of Allah, the light in the midst of all darknesses has so many rights on us. And because of that, we initiated Quran Circle. In Quran Circle 1, we listened to the entire Quran. This was a great blessing. The Qur'an is both concise and comprehensive. It has all aspects of guidance to all mankind. And because of that, in Qur'an Circle 2, we selected verses in every juz with a specific topic. We listened to the recitation and we reflected upon the meaning of that specific topic. Allah is the light of the heavens each surah in the Quran, every chapter of the Quran has an objective. We looked into the objectives of the surahs that we chose and selected in Quran Circle 3. Brothers and sisters, take advantage of this opportunity. Get your mushafs, open it, follow with us with the recitation. We will choose surahs in the Quran for us to reflect upon. So let's take advantage of it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. So from this hadith and also many ayat, especially of Surah An-Nur, uh, the chapter which is full of etiquette and uh, uh, educations, it teaches us for innocence in one of its verses, Ya ayuhal ladina amanu, la tadkhulu buyutan ghayra buyutikum hatta tasta'nisu wa tusallimu ala ahliha. Thalikum khayrun lakum la'allakum tadakkaroon. And this ayah means, oh who you believe, you shall not enter houses which are not yours. Okay? before seeking permission and giving salam to its dwellers that is better for you in order to take heed. So what it means 
this is ayah number 27 of surah uh, an-nur that you and and this is in the past when they didn't have phones landlines and cell phones and social media and all of that that when you go to somebody's house the only way to visit somebody if there was no previous appointment is to show up and uh, knock on the door or uh, talk and say assalamu alaikum this is so and so i came to visit you may i come in so they may say yeah please come on in and they open the door and they may say we're busy now it shouldn't hurt your feeling if you were told to go back go back there's no hurt feeling maybe you have something at home we cannot afford to host you right now so it shouldn't hurt your feeling whatsoever then the istizan seeking the permission the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said one should seek the permission twice if he is permitted or otherwise go home return go back that's why abu musa al-ash'ari one of the great companions uh, may allah be pleased with him once visited umar al-khattab when he was the khalifa amir al-mu'minin the leader of the faithful and the believers so he said assalamu alayka amir al-mu'minin may i come in uh, he didn't hear any reply he repeated that twice then thrice three times then Umar al-Khattab was busy with something then he said I heard the sound of so and so Abu Musa al-Ash'ari uh, allow him in invite him to come in so they went to check on him and he's gone so Umar al-Khattab later on called him and he said what happened you came and you just left he said, well, I sought permission three times, and when no one permitted me, so I left. He said, and where did you get this? I take it from. He said, this is what the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said. He said, well, you know, if you don't show a witness, if you don't bring a shahid that the Prophet Sallallahu said so, I will discipline you. So many of the Sahaba were ready to bear witness, and the youngest of whom who was Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, said yes I bear witness I have heard that from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam yeah man this is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was busy teaching the ummah all the etiquette the ziyarah he said it is it is very important to visit one another for the sake of Allah but it has etiquette you don't show up at your convenience and you don't impose yourself because you're available you have a free time no there are etiquette it has to be considered and kept in mind the the condition of the host um, maybe they're resting maybe they are not ready to receive you right now Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam before hosting somebody at house who was from out of town he 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 consulted Aisha we have a guest from out of town she said we have no food at home only water Hafsa Safiya Zainab they all said the same. They said, oh, have you forgotten? It's been already three days. We have nothing at home but water. Uh, what did the Prophet ﷺ do? He turned around and he said, who would like to host our guest tonight? Uh, Abu Talha showed up and said, yes, it will honor me to host the guest of the Prophet ﷺ. And you know the story. The Prophet ﷺ didn't bring a guest from outside and took him home. And he just surprised his family. Maybe they don't have anything to host the guests with and it would be really embarrassing do you guys remember when Abu Hurairah may Allah be pleased with him was starving and he was lying down in his street and out of hunger then he, he showed up before Abu Bakr to ask him a question pretending as if he needs to ask a question hoping that Abu Bakr will pay attention to his desperate uh, starving condition and he'll give him something to eat then Umar then when the Prophet sallallahu saw him in this condition he said Abahir follow me then he went home he went where home to his own house Rasulullah sallallahu took Abu Huraira back to his own house the Prophet's house فاستأذن. Abu Huraira said the Prophet sallallahu استأذن he sought permission he didn't surprise Aisha or Hafsa or Zana said, hey, we have a guest. He sought permission first. I have somebody with me. I have a guest. It's my house. But the wife at home needs to know that you're bringing somebody. So when he was permitted, he said, Abahir, come on in. 
and he saw a bowl of milk he said where did this come from they said it's a gift so and so brought it to us as a gift at that the Prophet ﷺ invited Abu Raira not only that he asked him to invite Ahlu Sufa at that time they were about 70 to come and all drink from that milk which was given to the Prophet ﷺ as a gift and he was the last to drink out of this milk peace be upon him so from his lifestyle وسلم, we put the pieces together the hadith of Abu Huraira, the hadith of Aisha the hadith of Abu Talha the hadith of Abu Mas'ud al-Badri that we're studying right now the hadith of Abu Musa al-Ash'ari we learn the etiquette of the ziyara a ziyara is such a great act of worship yes it is an act of worship when I invite somebody to my house and this person is a good person is a righteous person you will be rewarded for that when I accept the invitation of a, a good person, a righteous person, and I eat and I drink from his food and his drink, that's an act of worship, and you will be rewarded for that. Not only that, in the sacred hadith on the Day of Judgment, Allah the Almighty will call upon some people and you say, Aina al fi? Aina al fi? What are those who used to visit one another? Fi means for my sake. For my sake. What are those who used to sit mutajalisin? They used to hang around together for my sake. Why? For my sake. I visit somebody for the sake of Allah. I buy a cake and it costs a lot. And I take it to one of my friends, one of my brothers or one of my sisters for the sake of Allah. I will be rewarded for that. The juice that they offer, the food that they offer, all of the, these are all acts of sadaqat, charity, work, and you will be rewarded for that, provided you follow this etiquette. You don't show up, even though you have an access to phone people and say, I would like to visit you, when are you available? Oh, wait a minute. Uh, honey, we have a guest. When is it a good time to host him? Oh no, today it's impossible. We have a very tight schedule. We have the private tutors coming to teach the kids. We don't have a room. We don't have this and this. And this. Consult your wife. Consult your wife. Consult your spouse. Same if she wants to invite uh, some friends at home. Because it doesn't only belong to you, nor does it only belong to her. So that the kids would learn from both of you the etiquette of hosting or visiting somebody. Here in this particular hadith, the Prophet وسلم, along with four people were invited for ta'am, food, dinner, lunch, a feast. This Sahabi had prepared. Somebody met with the Prophet وسلم, and they kept talking to him. Now they become six of them. The man invited only five. Is it permissible for the guests to bring along with them others without seeking the permission of the host beforehand no it is not permissible oh our host is a generous man and he wouldn't mind how do you know that he only invited you because he wanted to talk to you in private about a private matter how do you know that maybe he doesn't like this person he would like this person to set a foot in his house for a reason or another so consult him first I'm inviting this person is it okay or not and who is seeking permission the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam I mean I'm gonna ask you if Rasulullah Sallallahu is alive among us and you invited him and when he's coming he brought some people would you dare to say no of course not welcome to the Prophet and all his companions and all his guests they are my guests with pleasure but Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is teaching us innama ana mu'allim he said, I'm just a teacher. He is teaching us, disciplining us, educating us. Or otherwise, in other conditions, the Prophet Sallallahu such as in the case of Jabir ibn Abdullah, on the battle of the trench, when they were digging and they were 1,000, and Jabir ibn Abdullah saw how the Prophet Sallallahu was tying two stones around his stomach to suppress his hunger. And they slaughter the little goat enough for a couple people, five, six, maybe. And he said to the Prophet, وسلم, You can come along with a few of your companions, meaning Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, the closest. But the Prophet وسلم, said, Ya Ahl al Khandaq, all the people of the 
Khandaq, the ditch that they were digging, and they were 1,000. He said, Jabir is preparing a feast for us because now he will be in a charge for feeding. And he knows that Jabir is his brother and his wife is his sister. Yani, that he is inviting them to his house and he is going to present a miracle, show them a miracle. And not to do athara, that he will give precedence to himself to fill his stomach while there is another 1,000 companions being starving. No, 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 no. And you know the story. How Jabir was so embarrassed and his wife he said, don't worry about it. By the way, he didn't surprise Jabir and his wife. He said to Jabir, go and tell your wife that I'm bringing that many people. Yeah, the Rasulullah said, don't worry about it. And, and tell your wife not to touch the food until I come. Okay, and not to remove the, the meat from the burma, from the pot which is on fire until I come. Then when he came, he started serving the food by himself so there was barakah in it. Here the Prophet ﷺ, when he arrived to the host house, he said, well, I understand that we invited only us. We have somebody who joined us. Would you permit him to come in? Or shall he go back? And there is no hurt feeling whatsoever. He said, of course, Ya Rasulullah, let him come in. Now he's teaching us, even though any Muslim would be happy to invite the Prophet and all his guests and all his companions. But he is teaching us, Innama ana mu'allim. May the best peace and blessings be upon Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa My dear brothers and sisters, we've just come to the end of today's edition of your program, Gardens of the Pious. And this uh, chapter also consisted of one hadith only next time inshallah we'll begin with a new chapter chapter number 104 until then i leave you all in the care of allah wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to be the best and give his best religion to them Allah our God is the greatest the one and only glory to him he born in humans to be the best and give his best religion to them so why did they ignore that forgiving all about him in paradise worshiping cows fire and stones Selling the best with the cheapest price So why did they ignore that? Forgetting all about hell and paradise Worshipping cows, fire and stones Selling their best with the cheapest price Rasulallah